In today's video, I'll be talking about the three main components that you have to think about before you design your best piano lesson. My name is Dima, and in this channel, I give you practical tips and strategies how to teach piano to students with special needs. If you are a piano teacher like me, you probably understand how short of the time we spend every week with our students. 30, 60 minutes maybe, and it's only once a week. I think this is such a short time, and piano and music education is really very wide, and there are so many different things that we need to include in this one lesson, which is almost impossible. So unless we plan things properly, it will not work and you will have so many gaps in your students' um, education. This whole process becomes even more challenging if your student has a disability or a special needs or if he really needs strict routine and he needs um, things to happen always in a predictable and um, a manner that he understands and likes. So today I will try to uh, give you a guideline on how to make uh, things work for you. The three main elements that you need to consider very carefully before you start planning your lessons uh, are as follows. Your student. Number two, is what are you planning to teach during that lesson that you want to plan and number three is the time that you have and how are you are you gonna use it in the best way to deliver your lesson number one your student of course, when you plan a lesson for a student who is five years old, uh, you will not plan it the same way if your student is a teenager or maybe is an adult. So your, uh, the age of your student, the level he is at, is he beginner, is he an intermediate, advanced, where is he exactly at? Does he have a special need? Um, does he have special goals uh, or ambitions? What, why is the student coming to you in the first place? How active are they? Can you ask uh, your student to sit at the bench and stay there for more than 10 minutes? Or will your student be restless after a minute, a minute or two? Does your uh, student crave routine? Or can you be creative and give your students something different and a surprise every week? Um, does your student uh, like to sing or does uh, your student prefer to sight read or maybe uh, he likes to do even something else? Uh, dislikes and likes, this is also very important that you need to be considering. Uh, all of these, uh, you have to study them to study them very carefully before you start to design your lesson. For example, if I have a restless student who cannot sit for more than 10 minutes at the bench, I have to keep having breaks here and there and um, doing different activities and if, my, of the, if the piece or the repertoire that he's studying at, the, at that lesson is a little bit challenging, maybe you need to break it up um, study for 5-10 minutes on the piano and then maybe move and do um, some rhythm game and then go back to the piano and play a little bit more and then maybe do um, a rhythm activity I don't know like, that's totally up to you and up to your student and what you want to teach during that lesson which brings us now to the second component that you need to decide on. In order to deliver a comprehensive piano education, 
you need to include uh, five different components, in my opinion, uh, which are uh, very important. They do. You do not have to teach all of them in one lesson. You can have. You can um, focus on one of them during a lesson. Maybe the next lesson on the second one, or maybe you choose three to focus on during this lesson, and then the other two during the following lesson, and so on. However, your student has to be learning uh, ear training, has to be learning rhythm, uh, technique, uh, creativity, and assigned pieces or repertoires. Five main things that they really need to be learning during the piano lessons in general. So, depending on what you are going to teach during this lesson, um, plays a very big role in how you are going to, to um, design that lesson in particular. Finally, after you have considered your student and what exactly you decide what exactly you want to teach during the lesson, you reach the final stage where you need to divide uh, the time to teach the specific things that you want to teach. Usually I like to think about it uh, this way. I divide my lessons into um, a beginning or a welcome and then the main segment of the lesson. I might have some short breaks. Um, I call them breaks, but I never tell the student it's a break time because during these breaks, we will be learning also uh, piano related things, but it will be a lighter, um, that needs something that needs lighter concentration and not very demanding. And also we have at the end um, an ending to the lesson. Let's study them one by one. The warm-up. What you put in the warm-up depends on your students. I have so many students who come after our soccer lesson who are very tired and they've probably sometimes napped in the car ride uh, while uh, they were coming to me and there's they feel sleepy and not very well so we start with some activity that um, incorporates some movement um, maybe playing a rhythm game on the bongos or singing a song or something that in, involves some movement or something to wake them up some other students uh, come uh, very hyper and um, overactive so I want to calm them down we, um, we do something different I will not um, add to their excitement by jumping or singing maybe we just sit down and we play some scales we do something to calm them down of course, uh, if you have an advanced student, maybe you like to play some hand on exercises, do some scales, arpeggios, something like that. With a beginner student, it has to be a little bit different. Maybe you start with um, a song, a game, it depends. And then we have the main segment of the lesson where I usually uh, like to teach uh, the pieces from the book, from the book that I'm using. And uh, depending on the student, if they can sit uh, at the piano uh, for a considerable amount of time, uh, I will let them do that. Some students um, cannot focus more than 10 minutes or even less, sometimes uh, 5 minutes uh, in a whole stretch. That's fine. We do 5 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever, and then we move out of the piano and then Maybe we do a worksheet, uh, we do some theory, well, we do another activity and then we come back and we finish the lesson that we need to finish. And the ending, uh, always, always, I try to always um, make it uh, the most fun or uh, something that will leave the students with um, a good memory of the lesson. Sometimes, um, if I'm teaching uh, group students, um, 
I mean, if I'm having group lessons, uh, we share what we have learned during the lesson. Um, each one of the students will come here and will play what they have learned during the lesson and they take turns. Yeah, sometimes if it's just one student, we might end uh, with a short song. Um, or uh, sometimes if it's a group lesson, we also can finish with a, a rhythm game or an ear training game. The options are endless, but I like to end on a good note so uh, the kids will like to come again the next lesson. In the description below, I have included uh, an example lesson plan and I also included uh, some visuals to help you plan your lessons if your student uh, is uh, one who benefits from visuals. So please don't forget to click the link. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe. I will be uploading new videos every week. And thank you for watching.